We have three earthward-directed solar storms that could bring us aurora, plus a nasty sunspot that's been firing off big flares and making a mess of the radio communications and causing some GPS issues. That's in the news this week. We're coming down from the high of those gorgeous set of solar storms we had back on the 15th. You can see them being spawned by some of these eruptions right here. And those brought us some gorgeous aurora. Uh, we had beautiful Perseids with aurora. We even had a proton arc. I'll let you be the judge. Uh, and I'll get to that in a minute. Meanwhile, we kind of quieted down on the sun a little bit until region 2403 showed up. And this thing started firing uh, solar storm after solar storm almost as soon as it became in view. We had one uh, starting around the 21st and then again on the 22nd and now even into the 23rd we're still seeing these solar storms. It's also fired a number of flares and part of the reason I think it's got this very strange configuration with coronal holes on either side so it's likely going to be unstable pretty much as it continues to cross through the disk. Switching to our M flare threat meter, you can see prior to the 21st, things were pretty quiet. There wasn't a lot going on. And then bam, one, two, three, four, five, six M class flares in the span of just a couple days, and things continue to be firing. This is all due to region 2403. Things seem to be quieting down a little bit in terms of the flare potential, but this region has just fired off yet another solar storm. Switching to our solar storm levels, you can see back on the 15th we did have that gorgeous G3 level solar storm which caused some gorgeous aurora pretty much all over the world including from the ISS. We've got some really great shots. And then it was followed by a, f a high speed stream and so the storming just continued for days and days until about the 19th when things finally began to really calm down. And all of this activity over the past week or so has brought us some amazing aurora shows pretty much all over the world. And some of it has even overlapped with Perseids, which has given us some beautiful photographs. And with this latest solar storm, as you can see here from the ISS, it was incredibly strong. And it's brought us pictures of proton arcs that were seen all over from Canada and clear down into Washington State. So for example, we saw gorgeous Perseids along with aurora in Denmark and in Finland in Sweden and in Scotland. Now in Canada, Aurora was so plentiful I can't even post all the pictures. In British Columbia, we had gorgeous Aurora from places like Whistler and Black Tusk. In Alberta, we had a gorgeous Aurora from Edmonton and also Alex. And there were Coronas in the United States over Alaska. We also had beautiful Aurora in Vermont as well as in Montana. Minnesota, Colorado, and Wyoming. That's how far south it reached. And here's the proton arc in Washington state. Now down south, we saw aurora in Tasmania, and in New Zealand, and it even reached as far north as South Australia. Now, returning to that set of solar storms that's on their way to Earth right now, this is our prediction model, Enlil. This is NOAA's version of the model. The top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity. And you can see that set of solar storms coming out really fast. And it's also embedded in a high-speed stream. So when this set of storms hits, it should be right early on the 24th, and it might bring us some really good aurora, uh, hopefully down to mid-latitudes. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And you can see the backside is actually very complicated right now. There's a lot of stuff going on. We've got a new region that that's going to be rotating into view in probably about three days or so. And then region 2396, you can see there's a lot of activity. A lot of solar storms are being launched in and around that area. And that region should be rotating into view in about seven days or so. So we actually have a lot to look forward to. Returning to the disk, you can see region 2401 is now rotating off of the west limb, and there's not a lot else going on except for region 2403, and this thing is in massive. It has been captivating our attention ever since it came into view, and it's continuing to be unstable and fire off these M-class flares. Now, as this thing rotates past center disk and onto the west side, it will begin to become a threat for uh, particle radiation storms. So NOAA is giving us about 10% chance for a particle radiation storm as this thing rotates rotates off to the west limb and that may increase depending upon uh, how unstable the region remains.
Looking at our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, you can definitely see the impact that we're expecting from those solar storms and that high speed wind. NOAA is giving us about a 45% chance of a major storm at high latitudes with it continuing to be active in aurora chances throughout the week. At mid latitudes, we're only expecting about a 15% chance of minor storm conditions over the next few days with things beginning to die down as you get later through the week. But again, the aurora possibilities are quite high. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, the dominant player here is region 2403. Uh, NOAA is giving us about a 65% chance of an M-class flare with about a 10% chance of an X-class flare over the coming days. And as that region begins to rotate off to the west limb, you're seeing a rising chance of a particle radiation storm up to about 10% or so. And that can, will continue throughout the week as that region rotates out of view. So this week is very busy. We have three solar storms that are en route along with some high speed wind. In fact, the beginning of that high speed wind is already upon us and I'm getting reports that the amateur radio bands are pretty much smashed. And when those solar storms hit, that's just going to make things even harder. And of course, we've got these M-class flares that just keep going off one after the other after the other. So that means the amateur radio bands are probably toast for the next uh, 24 to maybe even 72 hours. And all you GPS people, no drone race. Uh, under the aurora, definitely not, and at high latitudes. That could be a problem for the next few days. Outside of that, we do have some gorgeous chances for aurora, so please keep those aurora photos coming. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.